Today's video is going to be a little different than usual. We're going to be talking about the top things that we think are likely to change in Rise of Kingdoms in 2021 based on things that we've seen in the past. So strap yourselves in for our predictions, a little bit of tinfoil hatting going on for what this new year will bring us. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. And today, we're putting on our thinking cap, baby, to try to figure out what the new year will bring. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We've been consulting with a number of folks that we've brought onto the stream before, members of our alliance, also the Four Horsemen, to figure out what sorts of things might we expect in Rise of Kingdoms in 2021? So I'm going to march through some of these things that we've come up with, and hopefully these predictions will ring true, or at least some of them will, in this new year. The first prediction that I have for you is about the Ark of Osiris, because Ark of Osiris is kind of an evolution of what this originally was called, Alliance Battlegrounds. My suspicion... And my sincere hope is that we get a new battleground to play beyond just the Ark of Osiris. I think there's a lot of opportunity to design some really fun, exciting, different maps that could be really strategically complex and very different from what we've already seen. A few examples would be Capture the Flag as a sort of game mode that you could play, a multi-flag situation. So to kind of address the massive lag and difficulty you might have battling everybody in the center all at once, what if there were three places with flags, then you need to get multiple flags. That could be really interesting and strategic as well. You could use stuff with like King of the Hill and holding territory. I think there are a ton of fully untapped ideas beyond the Ark of Osiris as a battleground that will be very fun to play. Those also could get woven into League gameplay, and I think that would add a lot of strategic depth, complexity, and fun that we are all looking for. The next prediction that I've got for you is that I think we'll see the Trojan Horse version of KVK land before the end of this year, with possibly additional versions or formats for KVK being announced by the end of the year. I think that the ability to choose what style of KVK you do is exciting. I think there is a lot of opportunity, and I hope, I sincerely hope, that things move in the direction of being perhaps more free-to-play friendly in the Strife of the Eight and the Trojan Horse, and the main factor that would determine exactly how that looks is what the technology specifically is in these game modes. Yes, we know that in Heroic Anthem that if you pay to win, you advance your tech an astonishing amount. Hopefully, that is toned way back in at least one of these versions of KVK while still maintaining the currency system that they use for rewards. With that said, it's entirely possible that Season of Conquest is one flavor of KVK that your kingdom can engage in. Maybe they will add some other flavor of KVK beyond this, but I think in 2021, we'll see Trojan Horse, we might get whisperings of a new version of KVK, and then I think the choice of these three is probably what we'll be doing for some time. That doesn't mean that they won't adjust these. That doesn't mean that they won't refine these. But I think that a reasonable amount of stuff to get in a year would be the one version of KVK over here, some adjustments to these perhaps, and then maybe something else being announced to come in 2022. Wow, that feels weird to say out loud. Speaking of the Season of Conquest, let's talk about the rewards for the Season of Conquest, which you can see on the screen here. I think, gosh, I, I really wanted to come in and say, you know, at the end of the year, they'll add some new rewards. But we had three seasons of the lucky coin <laughs> well beyond when we wanted to continue getting the lucky coin. I think that this is going to stay the same in terms of what rewards are here. Although if they do add more rewards in here, it is conceivable that they could either increase the item level, and I do think we may see some increased item level of rewards as we go further and further into our time with the equipment system, 
or more diversity of rewards expanding beyond just the weapon and the helmet. With that said, there were a number of clues about Heroic Anthem KVK that we probably didn't even see coming, and it would have been very hard to align or predict the ways in which this would manifest. For example, we know that there are pick one chests for helmets, there are pick one chests for weapons, and as it turns out, those are the only pick one chests that we've had up to this moment in time anyways, in Rise of Kingdoms, where you could get the set pieces from a pick chest. I'll show you exactly what that looks like over here. Who knew, by the way, that that would be some sort of indicator. See this? None of the set pieces in the chest piece. None of the set pieces in the leg selection. But for helmet, the set pieces, right? There was an indicator of what our KVK rewards would look like way before we knew, oh man, that's why they've given us the set pieces over here because you actually have an enticing alternative choice if you can win KVK and muster the materials, which is a challenge in and of itself to get these different items crafted. The clues are kind of all over the place and they actually come many, many, many months in advance before we see the ways in which those things will fully manifest. Back to the topic of equipment, I think it is likely we will see higher levels of legendaries appear and the most likely thing is for those to appear as either accessories or as items other than a weapon or helmet slot. It's entirely possible they could even release higher tiered sets, which would be, whew, I mean, pretty next level, but also fairly probably incremental and so expensive, I can't even imagine how that would be. But this brings me to another prediction, which is that I think that over the course of the year, materials will become more and more accessible to more players, and the ability to craft more of these patterns that you've got will take place, but I don't think we will ever catch up with the volume of patterns we have obtained or ever really get enough materials, basically, to make every pattern we get. I think that's never going to happen. The patterns are scarce, but the materials for some of this stuff is even more scarce. We'll see how that unfolds over the course of the year, but I do think we'll get a few more ways to get materials, possibly in the form of more PvE events, such as the Golden Kingdom, such as Soroli, we'll see. Where the heck is the Karak ceremony? Anyone know where that went? Could, could you, could you, paging the Karak ceremony? My next prediction is for the Mightiest Governor. They've just gone in and added a sixth stage to the Mightiest Governor, and I think it is highly unlikely this sacred aspect of Rise of Kingdoms is likely to further change throughout the year. It's possible that changing that last stage was a setup for something else, but I honestly think that they're just rounding out the way that Mightiest Governor works. In the last stage, it's really unpredictable what's going to happen. You're going to be able to get points doing any of the things from the other stages, less points than you would have got for doing them originally, but I think it's going to be really interesting to see what commanders show up in Mightiest Governor. I expect that we will see new commanders, every five Mightiest Governor cycles, similar to what we saw over the course of this last year. Sometimes it was four Mightiest Governor cycles, sometimes it was six with a commander, but that's roughly every 10 weeks, two new legendary commanders, which means, yeah, that is a lot of new legendary commanders making their way into the game. I think it is unlikely that the rhythm they've got of going through and releasing commanders that do similar stuff, for instance, a pair of cavalry commanders, a pair of archer commanders, a pair of leadership commanders. I think that mechanism is going to remain largely the same. We've got our archers now, and I expect we'll get cavalry next. And that is generally fairly predictable. On the topic of commanders, I also want to shift gears and talk a little bit about epic commanders and civilizations. I would hope that by the end of 2021, we'll see a couple new commanders here perhaps some epic commanders and civilizations. What will those civilizations do? I'm not entirely sure, but I will call attention to the fact that we only have one, two, and then three infantry civilizations where we have four of everything else. I think it is highly likely we get at least one more civilization and that civilization is an infantry civilization, and it's going to come with a new epic commander. And of course, because it's a starting civilization, 
right? Like you could end up in the beginning with this new commander, which would be pretty cool, but probably going to be available in gold keys. So unlike Diao Chan, who's got a separate unlock mechanism, I think it is highly likely that we see, again, one infantry civilization with one new epic commander. What will that civilization do? Boy, it's hard to say. I would like maybe some resource cost reduction for healing troops. That would be kind of interesting. Right? Health is a stat I'd be really interested in for infantry, but France has already got kind of a corner on that. I don't know what they would do. Maybe counterattack damage would be pretty sick for an infantry civilization. That actually, that, that's, what I, that's what I want. I want counterattack damage or normal attack damage. Yeah, that's it. Counterattack damage or normal damage. Healing cost reduction. Th those are some things I'd like to see in a new infantry civilization. And the infantry unit, oh man, I don't know what they would do. Let's say that they would be infantry. How about how about this? How about mobility? Because because we, we haven't seen that infantry mobility. Dude, that'd be kind of cool. Infantry mobility and conquering. What the heck? Go crazy, just cool. I don't know. That sounds crazy. Maybe it'll be a peacekeep. Maybe it's more likely to be a peacekeeping commander. Let's see if that one comes true. Now it is possible, by the way, that Rise of Kingdoms will do more cross promotions. Depending on how well, and I guess the place I should look is actually over here, depending on how well this Dynasty Warriors cross-promotion goes, I think it is very likely we will see more events just like this in order to market the game and reach more players. That seems perfectly logical to me. And hopefully we do continue to see commanders that pair together. While I am pretty excited about the peacekeeping and battling nature of Diao Chan, I think she brings a lot to the table Lu Bu is feeling pretty lackluster, and I just generally think that his role is very narrow. It's for big field brawls where 50% defense hitting multiple targets is really good. That's where it's probably like the best, or maybe swarming a garrison and arc because hard to top a 50% defense reduction. In fact, that's the strongest in the game. But I don't know. I, I would like to see those new commanders that land be relevant, but not overpowered. And that's a very tricky balance to walk, but hey, thankfully I don't have to walk it. I just get to play with the commanders when they land. Now, there is one prediction I had for 2020 that actually didn't come to fruition. I would have swore we were going to see a VIP 18. Didn't happen. Did not happen. We've seen in the past VIP 17 giving training speed, which I did not expect, AP limitation, which is very nice, because look, like that doesn't harm the balance of like free to play gameplay for, uh, you know, a big spender to have a little bit more AP limitation, not even AP regen, just like, you know, you could sleep an hour more before you <laughs> are wasting AP. 5% all damage, I really didn't expect that feel that, that just felt very powerful. In fact, if you watch my old videos, I recommended that every buff here be non combat oriented so as to not mess with the balance of free to play and pay to win. But OK, whatever. Going over here. AP recovery is what we got at VIP 16. Material production speed, I thought was awesome. It's very incremental and small, but like whales appreciate it and you you really like don't actually notice it. 200 AP limitation was great. Healing resource consumption reduction was really nice. And you know, VIP 15, that had been out for a really long time, giving us gathering speed, AP recovery, building speed, research speed, hospital cap, march speed, healing speed, training speed, AP limitation. Holy jeez. There are a bunch of benefits that you could get at like a VIP 18. Things like AP recovery, AP limitation, healing resource consumption again, a reduction of that. Uh, production of resources we will definitely see. That goes up with every VIP level, food, wood, stone, gold. You could see gathering speed boost, I suppose. There could be more materials that come from the chest over here. I think there's a couple possibilities for what's happening with VIP, okay? One is they say, okay, here's VIP 18. Here's like, you know, 5% more normal attack damage and some AP limitation and some gathering speed or whatever they do, right? And I, I just don't think they're going to just drop VIP 18 on us for like, hey, it's a Tuesday. Here's VIP 18. I think that what is most likely here is that they're waiting to actually drop perhaps several levels of VIP all at once and to theme it around something. It's entirely possible. Several levels of VIP feels really insane to me. I don't know. Those are the two ideas, that they go back to what they were doing before, 
where like, hey, we've got this, you know, commander, except who knows what it'll be at the time. Probably not commanders, but that's something I'm going to talk about in a minute, right? Where they've got like Hannibal Barca and then Minamoto. Could be that there's some thing that they reward when they did materials. Like this made sense as like a new VIP level. VIP 17 was just like, I don't know. Here's VIP 17. VIP 18 and beyond may be themed, and I'd be kind of curious to see what that theme is around. But let's talk about some things that would be really next level game changing, completely game changing, if they happened. The first thing that would be completely game changing is if they simply reworked some of the talent trees. We all know that the integration tree is kind of a joke. We all know that the versatility tree is kind of a joke. So if we look at a commander like El Cid, right? Like there's not really a lot to do in here, unless maybe I'm just completely missing the secret value that exists in versatility. But I, pff, perhaps they will rework this tree to be more interesting. Perhaps they will rework the integration tree to be more interesting and valuable and meaningful or create situations where the existing tree becomes more interesting. But what I think is probably more likely, and perhaps like, this is one of those like far out ideas, but what if they added new talent trees? Now, look, I know that brings a lot of complexity with it and complexity makes it unlikely to happen, but they could add a couple new talent trees. In fact, I don't know, like one of each type of tree a red tree, yellow tree, blue tree, and some of the new commanders could start to get some of those new talent trees so that over time we've got some commanders that do some new, interesting, different stuff. I, again, I don't know exactly what that would look like, but new talent trees would certainly spice things up as interesting or maybe more interesting than seeing a rework of the old trees is getting those new ones. I think that would be pretty nutty. In addition, we've got six-star commanders now. It looks like commanders were fully designed from the get-go to be six stars, just with the way the portraits look, you know? It's not like there's a spot for a seventh star in there, but they could add a way to get sort of the equivalent of a seventh star on a commander to bring a commander even higher level. I, I don't know. That comes with a lot of complications and implications if they did that, because if you have commanders higher level... Theoretically, that could mean you could bring more troops, or maybe it's just going to be more talent points, or maybe it's no more talent points. I don't know. If you elevate the level that you can bring commanders to, that sure would make my 700 million worth of experience tomes a lot more valuable. But I would expect if they do that, there'll be something besides a star level that lets you like ascend the commander to either like a mythic tier or a new level or I don't know. But mythic tier is another idea for what they could do with the game that I think is unlikely, but tinfoil hatty of me. I'm just going to mention it. Like they could add a new tier of commander to the game. Feels unlikely to me. That feels really unlikely to me. But if they did do that, if they did add a new tier of commander, I would think that it might be obtained by having some number of achievements perhaps completed or some number of other commanders already expertised or, you know, who that who the heck knows what crazy way you could get to unlock it. Maybe just a KVK reward, right? It's like you use your conquest coins and you get some of the sculptures. Who knows? But I think that at some point, all of those things, adding different talent trees, reworking talent trees, adding star levels or levels to commanders, a way to ascend commanders, even to like change the way skills work. They already added an expertise skill, but maybe there's some enhancement material they come up with that lets you power up a skill even further. I'm just suggesting that there's a lot of things they could do. Maybe that's a premium KVK reward, an ability to like amp up a skill even more, right? There's a bunch of things they could do related to commanders that would add a lot of collectability, a lot of chase, a lot of desire to go and, you know, specialize your collection that if done right would be fun. And, you know, I mean, you know, this game, it's probably also a grind, but fun nonetheless. A couple other ideas I had that are out of left field, but we have seen precedent for this might be a couple new buildings. 
And a part of the reason I'm like really digging in the toolbox for like what comes next is I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, we had commanders. We got the expertise skill. That was like the next big thing with commanders. And then we got equipment. And that was like a huge level up, right? I don't think they're going to go in anytime soon and up the city hall level. I actually don't think that's a thing. I think the whole design of Heroic Anthem KVK was to say, you know what? We're not actually going to increase the city hall level and the building levels and all that stuff. And, and that, cha that really does create a chase that other games have struggled to, I don't know, keep new players engaged and coming in. Because think about it. Every time you enter into this game, like, like a new player has more and more and more stuff to chase. But at least equipment, like you get in on that early and you can do equipment at the same time that you're doing everything else. So it's not like they're adding something on top of the very long journey you're already going on toward T5 troops. So I think it's unlikely they will elevate City Hall beyond 25, but it is conceivable that they could go in and add new research. And, and I'm not talking about crystal research, although the presence of crystal research makes me really question whether or not they would do this. But like, pff, we've got two tabs of research here. What about a third? Entirely possible. Unrelated to getting to T5 troops, they certainly could add a third tree or a fourth. Who knows? More technology could be in our future. I don't know what it would do. Could be related to healing speed, hospital capacity, uh, a cost reduction for healing as well. There's a lot of stuff that could be really interesting to see. The same sorts of benefits you see in VIP down in a new research tree. That's enough of my crazy predictions. I would like to hear your predictions down below in the comments of this video. What the heck do you think is going to happen in 2021 in Rise of Kingdoms. What new updates will we see? Generally, we get a new patch every month, and every month is a new opportunity for something big. I think we'll probably get two or three big things that land in this new year, whether it's a new version of Alliance Battlegrounds or it's the new KVK. I think that's probably two of the three, and I don't know what the last one is, but I'm guessing that there might be something the equivalent of equipment that's just kind of cooking up and they're figuring out exactly when and how they want to go and deliver it but probably some new chase because after we've chased equipment for a while they can always add more item levels of equipment but i don't know will they add a new chase i i would think the answer is yes and if done right it will be fun it will be good for players of all skill levels at all levels of the game. And I hope very free to play friendly too. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. And at the end of the year, we will revisit this to let you know how many of our predictions were correct or if we were just so far off base that we're just gonna, just gonna need a new tinfoil hat. Until next time, my friends. You have fun smashing the kingdom.